I'm Reid, so today we're looking at the results of the two weeks trial now. We're going to look at the second week results of uh, Break and Bet, uh, which is a value betting system. So let's dive into those results. So, as you can see, this is week one results. Uh, I'm just going to update you a little because I had a £12.75 profit reported by Break and Bet, and I was reporting £13.75. Um, it takes a little reconciliation exercise with this because there's obviously a bet date and a settled date, and quite often they're different. So, if you're betting, say, today and then the, the game isn't only selling tomorrow or taking place tomorrow, then um, you can be a little bit out based on um, the figures but this was all to do with this one bet that hadn't settled it was the uh, Maccabi Tel Aviv or however, however you pronounce it um, game where I put a bet on for the game for the winner to qualify and um, that actually won and the reason I was a pound out because break and bet had took that pound off the stake where I hadn't so that was one thing and then the bet actually won and um, just on Wednesday gone there so I won one pounds forty four profit there. Um, so instead of thirteen seventy five, it meant my um, total profit for the week was fourteen pounds nineteen. So I haven't updated the pivot table here, but I have updated the um, total down here. So actually, the return on investment was seven percent um, on week one, which was really good. The strike rate was fifty eight and a half, and I was looking at any matches where. The probability was over 55 so that's so that's also good i think i didn't mention um you know, i was going to say that the profit per day isn't um great but it is what it is i mean 14 pounds a week i know i spent quite a bit of time doing it i probably put in a few hours to be fair during the day I, I mean it's a bit difficult because obviously I'm updating these figures as well so there's obviously that to consider as well um, under normal circumstances I wouldn't be doing all this but I'm just um, keeping a record um, to see how, how we get on so that's work that I wouldn't normally have to do and if we look at the week two analysis I've got all the bets here. I won't, I won't bore you with those because they're just a, a list of bets. I've got a really itchy nose. Apologies, I keep uh, itching my nose. Um, anyhow, you can see here, week two, we done 142 bets, which was about 60 down on the 200 we'd done on the first week. Uh, there was a couple of reasons for that. Uh, the first one was, obviously, I changed it at the end of week one to only look at matches that were 60% probability and above. So I do think I got a few less options in um, break and bet. I want to keep calling it break and bad. I have to keep thinking every time I say it, break and bet. Um, also, actually... Ran out of money in my Bet365 account because I was doing um, some extra places and two ups. Uh, it's a Bet365 account that hasn't been uh, gubbed yet. I'm using the Betfair Sportsbook has been gubbed and I haven't had any problems putting these bets on for anybody who's interested. Might be worth just using gubbed accounts. I haven't been gubbed on Bet365 yet. Touch wood. Um, that might be coming this week. I'm not sure because I am getting on some really crazy bets, like the number of like yellow, like the number of cards in a game, basically, which is probably a big no-no. Um, but I'm not too concerned if I lose the account because I've got other um, other things, my other accounts, basically. I shouldn't really say that, but I have. Um, so and. and I took, um, again, I took, it doesn't look like if I did take a couple of days off, you can see I only got on, well, I didn't put any bets on on Sunday because I wanted all the bets to have been settled by Sunday evening and last night, it's uh, Monday morning the day, you can see up there in the top right. Um, so the only bet I settled yesterday for the Sunday was the one I placed, um, I think it was early Sunday morning, it settled later on in the afternoon, I think all the bets had settled by 6 o'clock last night, so I Pull these figures together last night. So as you can see, out of the 142 bets, we had 87 wins and 44 losses, which gives us 
to be honest, an average strike rate of 61.27%. So again, week, second week running, I am more than happy with that. That it, that just cement, well, it doesn't cement because it's only two weeks, but it it covers the fact that last week I changed from 55% and got um, 58 and a half. Just going back to week one there, if it'll click. Um, so in week one, I was set it at 55% and over, and I got 58.5 strike rate. Week two, I've set it to 60% and over, and I've got 61.27. So I have absolutely no complaints whatsoever with that. However, um, looking down here at the profit, I've only actually made £5.72 pence, which is a little disappointing because last week we made £14 um, on a 58% strike rate, albeit we did do 200 bets, but they were only at a pound. These 142 bets have been at £2 each. Um, so looking at why is it 572 um we had a lot of sort of low days we had a three pound a three pound two six pounds and then an 88 pence yesterday but that's obviously i've just mentioned that so we didn't have any spectacular days however we did have a big losing day on the on the ninth which was tuesday and there was a slight reason for that i'm not i'm not going to blame it totally um, on the reason, but um, on Bet three six five, there was an issue with the site, and you could also say that it's a bit of an issue with the breaking bet software. But it was more to do. It was you know if if the Bet three six five site didn't have the problem, then it wouldn't have um, sort of shown its face in breaking bet. And I'll just try and explain it briefly. Um, but when I think it was under two and a half goals. Um, Normally you'll have you can bet like two and a half goals for the home team and then there's a column next to it which is like two and a half goals for the away team. So say if Man U were playing Liverpool for example, on the left column it would say uh, over or under two and a half goals for Man U and then the right hand column it would say over or under two and a half goals for um, Liverpool. Now I've noticed sort of part way through Tuesday that I've been putting a lot of these similar bets on and it was only like sort of half well probably yeah, part part way through the day probably getting on for halfway through the day i realized that both columns in bet 365 for some reason were labeled with the same team so it did look like the you know it was like so, so in the example it would be like man new over and under two and a half and then man new over and under two and a half but the second column was still the away team's odds basically but for some reason i don't know how break and bet works but it, it might the only thing i think it might be scraping the page and finding uh, different odds so it was looking at odds for like one team but the actual odds it was quoting was for the other column it was getting confused because both columns have been incorrectly labeled by bet 365 so once i realized that was happening i reported it back to um break and bet so i mean i don't suppose they can cater for stuff like that because it was a fault the underlying fault was with the bet 365 system it did seem to have, um, it did seem to be rectified when i looked again yesterday on the bet 365 site unfortunately as it transfers and most of my bets have been put on with 365 so um a high percentage probably nearly half of the bets I'm talking about here are 365 so that goes somewhat to explain that it's transpired in the results I mean basically I was it the bottom line is I was getting on the wrong bets through bet 365 and breaking bets not breaking bet, bet 365 primarily and then breaking bet um so <coughs> The profit's a profit at the end of the day. We've still made 572 in a week, which totals up, including my 14 pounds, is 19 pounds, and I'll come on to that for the two weeks. Um, what it does mean, I'm happy with the strike rate, not so happy about the profit. Uh, it works out at only 82 pence a day. We've put 142 bets on, that works out at 20 bets a day, and our ROI for uh, week two is 2.012%. Again, 
if you add all those up, if we had two percent every week, I'd be happy enough. You, you, you know, a bank account, you get look, you get two percent per per annum. To the scalability, uh, there's not really much to look at here, um, because the numbers are so low. But the profit per week I got was five seventy two. If I had been placing five pound bets, it would have been fourteen pound thirty. And if I had been placing ten pound bets, the profit would have been twenty eight pound sixty. Similarly, if I'd just only been placing a pound bet like I was last week, the profit would have only been two pounds eighty six, which what is probably needed to compare against uh, week one, against the fourteen pounds in week one. We only got two pound eighty six equivalent in week two. However. Uh, bear in mind that was only on 142 bets we would have probably got on if we'd only done a pound stake and kept it at 55 we would have been on a lot more than 142 bets but obviously I've upped that to 60 so that's that's the uh, decrease there okay added this week is a PL chart graph um, so you can see this is easy enough to get out of the software so I'll, I'll do this this will be the only thing I'm going to do uh, daily after week three so this week being week three Monday I'm gonna put in um, something different but I'm gonna do a little spoiler here and say that's gonna be in my next video because it's um, a little bit to explain um, I'm gonna try and take this up to the next level and see if we can get some more profit out of it with um, a, a specific stake and plan that's the, that's the only that's the only sort of hint you're getting about this uh, you'll have to watch the next video it's a cliffhanger um, but as you can see here this is week one so I mean we did have an extra day in week one as well because I don't know, did we one two three four five oh we did because we had the Sunday so put a couple of bets on on the Sunday but it's nothing nothing the right home work but so week one 14 pounds 19 week two when we run at a total of 1991 profit again I'm quite happy with that it was just seemed to be a slow week last week but we'll see what happens this week you can see yeah we we went quite well up to here if we'd been carrying on the same uh, trajectory it would have been up here by about now um, but as it happens we dropped down a bit um, before the end of week one I think is this the end of week one about here no yeah it is so there's the end of week one there we'd obviously dropped down a bit from our high of 21 pounds two pence which was on the thursday um and then starting last week obviously we took a big dip on the tuesday which i've just already mentioned it climbed back up again and then we took another small dip and it's climbed up the last two days saturday and sunday um and now we're back at a total of 1991 so we're just about back at our peak so if we drew a straight line through that i will put a straight line on this graph actually uh, an average and um, it would come up this way following the mouse that, that way so if we carried on that way we'd be looking at probably 30 pound profit by about next week another 10 pound we're averaging 10 pound a week at the moment um, but like i say i've got a plan to trial <laughs> there's no guarantees it's going to work but i'm going to explain it in the next video and i'm going to trial out a new plan a new staking plan to actually make more money um, so I'm going to continue with this graph. I'll be doing one more week of uh, week three analysis, um, you know, the, the full daily analysis. And then after that, I'm going to change to monthly. The reason I'm going to change to monthly is because of the aforementioned uh, reconciliation between the software that way you, you've, you've got a bet date and a settled date so you've got like a bet place date and a bet settled date and they're quite often different if they were always the same there wouldn't be any problems but some of the numbers are a bit out and I have to like just wait until the full day is over and every single bet settled for the for the previous day and that always isn't the next day um, as we've seen in the past so looking at the software this is the break and bet software um, it shows everything by month so you can see here, um, we've got uh, we've got July here where we had 24 bets. Now that was basically just the first day I started using it on the 31st of July. I wish I'd actually um, started using this on the 1st of August; it would have been a lot neater. But I started on the 31st of July in typical Mr. Drifter fashion. Um, 
so this will all be shown it'll show me the number of bets and um, how much we've placed in bets and how much we've won in bets and then the balance so you can see the 19 pounds 91 split between um, july and august there you get a nice little graph here as well and this obviously automatically updated, updates itself as you um, settle the bets, which I'll show you in a second. You can see here, um, this is the disappointing one, the bet 365. The reason being is because we've out of our 483 bets, 236 of them have gone on bet 365 and we're 11 pence down. Can you believe it after all that time? I can. Um, and Betfair Sportsbook and lads have done um, a lot better. We've only done 106 bets on Betfair and 97 bets on Ladbrokes. And um, those are both £10 up. I'm hoping this is um, attributable at last Tuesday where we had a minus 10 for the whole day. And I'm hoping a, hard, a large percentage was the Bet365 issue that I've already mentioned. 1x bet and Nijabet bet are actually um, strange ones because I don't, I can't even say Nijabet bet and I might have an account with them. So I don't even have an account with these two, but it's it's managed to put seven bets to them. The thing is I have found these seven bets and some and the other ones that I have used. So I have placed these bets, that's why they're on here. And I have settled them as well. Um, so what I'm seeing there is there's a fault in the software. Um, I have reported it and um, I'll see if I get back to it. It seems to be when you go and place the bet and you come back to the screen just before you record it, it seems to change the name of the bookies for some reason. Um, it got, it, it's not even there when you first place the bet because I don't have those bookies set up to place bets on. So The other, only other thing to mention on here is the exchanges. So um, Actually, it's only four and one bet. I think that's might have said five and two. That's the actual amounts. I wish it would put pound signs in here, or even at the top, like a pound or a dollar sign or a currency sign. Uh, Got to remember that um, the first week I was placing one pound bets, the second week I was placing two pound bets. So the 13 bets I've placed with Betfair Exchange is 21 pound. Um, so you can see here anyway the, back to the exchanges you've got Betfair exchange 13 bets matchbook we've only placed one bet which was in week one because it was only for one pound and smartmates we've placed 11 bets most of those are in week one as well um, so the take from this is that we're not getting on that many bets for the exchange um, and the reason why the exchange is so important is because you're not going to get gubbed by the exchange because they take a commission. Well, they take they, they make their money by um, taking a commission, so they're not going to gub you for taking value as such. Um, it would be nice to see those numbers a bit higher because obviously, if I turned all the bookies off, that would only be 13, 14, 25 bets over two weeks, which just ain't enough at the minute. And the one last thing I want to mention is Labrooks. I've found a few times, and I've reported this again, a breaking bet. A few times I've gone in and the odds have been like lower than what the software is reporting. Now, I can understand that it can be a timing thing, but it seems to only happen on certain bet types, like a DNB 1 or 2, which is a um, draw no bet for the home team, or draw no bet for the away team. They always consistently seem to be lower. So I don't know if it's picking up a some odds from a different um, category or something like that, displaying them and breaking bets saying, oh, they're good value. And then when you go to the site, they're not good value because the odds are way lower. Um, I've been making a decision there. Some have been placing at the low odds. Some have been using a little ad uh, boost to boost them up a bit and then placing them. And some have just been like ignoring. I am going to do a video, a, a um, how how to video on break and bet on how to use it and place these bets, and I'll, I'll just run, I'll just talk through everything as I do, and I'll do that in live time so you can see how I'm placing these bets. And I just want to go on to the um, betting history and just show you show you that. Um, no different from last week, albeit there's a 342 bets in there, which is 200 from week one and 142 from week two. It's really good sort of register record of um, the bets you're putting on. You can see, yeah, green means it won, amber is like a refund or void where you've got your stake back. And the red is um, where you've lost the bet. Um, 
you can just go down all these. It shows you 20 on a page, and I've now got 18 pages there. Um, not much more than that. That's where you would export it to a CSV, where I export them out into my spreadsheet, which we've just looked at. And there you go. And there's not much more to it than that. I will again. You'll see that happening and working when I um, do the how-to video. I basically just go in every morning and settle all the games, settle up all the games from the night before. It is a manual process, which is a little bit unfortunate, but I suppose for ten or eleven euros a month, which is what this software costs, I can live with it. Especially while I've been sort of trialing it, it's good to have a good understanding of how it works. That's it. Um, that's all I've got for this week. I hope you've enjoyed the video on week two. If you do have any comments or questions or any recommendations or anything I might be doing wrong or anything I could be doing better, please, please put them in the comments. I'm all ears. To be honest, I haven't seen much about this software on the internet. It's not much in the way of reviews, so I'm kind of not pioneering, but I'm kind of I feel like I'm on my own a little bit trying to trying to suss it out and like um, get it going. But hopefully, if I'm one of the first to do so, it can be used as a good resource for people going forward to use if it's successful. Um, as mentioned, I've got it. I'm ending on a cliffhanger because I'm doing something different on week three with regards to stakes. Week one, one pound. Week two two pounds week three watch the next video and find out cheers bye